My name is Jennifer Sapiel Neptune, and Sapiel is my maiden name. And um, I grew up in Old Town in Orono. Um, I lived in Old Town like, the first five or six years of my life, and then my mother bought a house in Orono and we moved to Orono. You know, I always grew up knowing that and, you know, spending time with my grandparents and, and you know, he would tell me stories about my great-grandmother who was a basket maker. And so I really wanted to be a basket maker, but I was also interested in the beadwork too. I, growing up, I was really a quiet, shy person and kind of bookish. and. So I spent a lot of time in the library, and I would go to the library over here at the university because my mother works at the University of Maine. So um, I would go to that library there as a teenager and pour through all the books, and and I started to see you know photographs of peaked caps and collars, and and was just really kind of awestruck by them and how beautiful they were and how powerful and and just you know, that whole tradition, and I hadn't, you know, seen them in person ever. This style of beadwork, um, I started, I think I was probably like 18 or 19, and just had this, like, overwhelming urge one day, you have to make a bag, you have to make a bag. And I was like, I don't know how to make a bag. I've never done that kind of beadwork before. Because, you know, jewelry, and it's similar, and a lot of the techniques are similar, but the applique is really different. A lot of the, uh, a lot of these old pieces ended up in museums um, in the late 1800s and early 1900s. There was a big push by anthropologists to go out and collect because at that time they thought that, you know, Indians were a dying race and everything was going to die out. So it was like, you know, salvage anthropology yeah. <laughs> and they went out and, you know, tried to get everything they could and so a lot of these pieces you know, went into museums and left our communities then. And so not many people have seen them. When I was asked to do um, this collar, the original is in the Smithsonian, mm -hmm. and I was able to go to Washington, D.C. and see it in person and photograph it. When they pull them out and you actually get to see something that you've only seen in black and white, it's pretty spectacular because they look totally different. They're totally different and they just like, you know, vibrate with energy. And mm -hmm. <laughs> this will be the hardest thing I've ever made by far. It's a big, big project, but I was really happy and excited to do it because I think it's so exciting when you can, um, when you, it's almost like bringing something back. Right now, you know, it's down in Washington and it's, almost impossible, you know, to get in and to see these things yeah. and really hard for people. And if I can make something kind of reappear in our community, then then I think that's a really good thing. You know, the more people that can see these old pieces and old styles, I think it just makes us stronger as people. And, you know, to remind ourselves about these beautiful things that our ancestors made. This is the way I like to do it. 